Should I come closer to you guys? Hey, why are you focusing on Saoirse Ronan and not me? Actually, <laughs> I can totally understand why you're focusing on Saoirse Ronan and not me. <laughs> Even my camera knows Ladybird's a masterpiece. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Meg, if you're new here. I am an introvert, I love the cozy things in life, but more than anything, I am a film nerd. I'm a film nerd. I studied film for four years, I graduated in November, I've directed some short films, and directing is what I wanna do. That pretty much sums me up, so stick around if you like. So I just had the worst month of my life. Yes, I'm gonna laugh in awkwardness. And one of the beautiful things about difficult times, it reminds you of the things that you find most comforting. And films really came to my aid in the last month. So my comfort films got me through this month. There is no other way to describe it. They literally carried me through this month. It reminded me of the power of cinema. Sometimes you just need that reminder of how much film can impact people's lives. It can make you feel happy. It can make you feel sad. It can make you feel overwhelmed. It can make you feel confused, angry but they can also make you feel comforted. So here are just some of my comfort films that I want to recommend to you guys. And I also really want you guys to share your comfort films in the comments because comfort films are so subjective. It's so fascinating. Anyway, let's get into it. I'm so excited. Here are currently my top comfort films. I need my notepad. I wrote these down. I have them right here, if you'd like to know. Keep watching. Number one, we have Little Women. This is specifically Little Women 2019. It has the coziness, the comfort, the happiness that I need in a comfort film. The acting is brilliant. We've got Saoirse Ronan, Florence Pugh, why am I blanking right now? There's just something so warm and beautiful about this film. It has the perfect amount of happiness and joy mixed with sadness. I love that about it. It has that kind of almost coming of age element to it as well. I just really, really want to like wrap myself in this film anytime I watch it. I am obviously a Greta Gerwig lover. Hence the Ladybird poster up here. So Ladybird would be one of my comfort films, but I think Little Women tops it simply because of the aesthetic of it. It is so comforting and warm and beautiful. I have to be honest right now, I am very much an Amy mixed with a Joe. I am both of them. I see myself in both of them so much. And I'm an Amy apologizer, so whatever. Up next is Singing in the Rain. So I actually found this film because I watched three of Greta Gorg's favorite films and oh my goodness. This was the first one of hers that I watched and this is Greta Gorg's ultimate comfort film. This is like her film that she goes to to watch when she needs like a pickup. I got it, I get it, I understand. I definitely have not watched enough older films, but oh my goodness, this one completely made me want to devour more and more older films. There is a reason this film is iconic as it is, I'm not the first person to say this, but the reason I find this film so comforting is just reminds me of the beauty of filmmaking and cinema. As an aspiring director, sometimes it can all seem really overwhelming, but when I watch Singing in the Rain, it just makes me want to make beautiful things and I don't know it it really glorifies the whole idea of filmmaking but it's in such a beautiful way and I adore it it's such a gorgeous film you've got a bit of romance in there you've got singing obviously I'm singing you fucking idiot beautiful beautiful sets beautiful costumes it's shot beautifully and considering it's an older film i could not get over how well everything was landing the jokes were funny everything about it it just felt timeless it was incredible so fell in love with this film last year and I have found myself gravitating towards it to throw it on on a rainy day or when I just need a little bit of comfort and just something beautiful to watch. Sing in the rain. I can't recommend it enough. Number three is How to Train Your Dragon 1 and 2. I did not add three in there for a reason and I'll get to that right 
in a moment, okay? So I found myself last month when I was down in the dumps, I was gravitating towards watching How to Train Your Dragon. I'd watched them before, probably about two, three years ago, and oh my God, when I watched them again, I was like, these films, they're so good. They are so, so good. The story, the characters, but oh my God, guys, the music of How to Train Your Dragon. John Powell. John Powell. The connection that Toothless and Hiccup have is just, oh, I could watch a whole movie of like an hour of them flying. The reason I haven't put number three on here is because I actually started watching the third one and I got to the halfway point and I was not in the headspace. I'm not gonna spoil this, but let's just say I was not in the headspace to finish that film because I would like to pretend forever that everyone lived in harmony and it stayed that way and that the second film was the last film. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I can understand, I can understand the reason for the third film. Let me live, let me live. So let's talk about the next film. I'm a strong believer that your comfort films, at least one of your comfort films should be slightly embarrassing to admit. Like you should question whether you tell people this or not because they're gonna judge you. But at the end of the day, that's the beauty of comfort films. We love comfort films for the fact that they bring us comfort, okay? <laughs> so my next comfort film is your vision song contest. It stars Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams. This film is so much fun. I'm sorry, it is so fun. It is obviously based on the Eurovision Song Contest, but Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams are two characters. They're from Iceland and they're these kind of weird oddball characters and they somehow get into the Eurovision representing it for Iceland. And they're such a mess and it's so goofy and it's so over the top and it's so camp, but that's what Eurovision is. And it is so good. The music in this film, it makes it so much more serious because the songs are not a joke. Like they are stunning songs. They are beautifully written. The last song in the film is like, it will give you goosebumps the first time you watch it. It is a goofy film, but it's also a brilliant film. I think Will Farrell made this film because he married a Swedish woman. And when he heard, it was Swedish, she's Swedish, isn't she? I think so. He's married to somebody from Europe anyway and they explained what the Eurovision Song Contest was to him and he was like we have to make a movie about this, this, this shit is crazy. And he made a really good film and I'm actually kind of disappointed they haven't made a second one because it's, it's so an option. That film needs a second one. I absolutely love it. But yeah, that's my very guilty pleasure comfort film. Next is How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. This is a classic, classic rom-com. We all know, we all love her, everybody loves it. We've got Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey. The two most iconic, iconic rom-com pairings. They are so, so good. I absolutely love them in this film. Their chemistry is on fire. It is on fire. I honestly watch this film and I wonder how they just remain friends after it because their chemistry is so good. The bathroom scene at his parents' house, when she's like, when your mom hugged me, it was the first time someone's hugged me in a really long time. Their chemistry in that scene. I, when I watch that scene, it feels like I shouldn't be here. Like I'm intruding. Like I was in the bathroom before they stormed in and I hid in the shower, hoping they would leave quickly, but they didn't. So now I'm having to listen to their deepest, darkest, most intimate secrets. And I'm watching these two about to get it on. And it's fire, like it's, they're on fire. They're so good, they're so good. There are so many rom-coms I could put on this list. I am a rom-com lover, but I think this one for me, every time it comes on, I'm, I'm sad. If I've got stuff to do, I don't care. If this is on the TV, I'm sitting and I love it. Before we go on further with my list, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. I wanna tell you guys a bit more about Skillshare's learning paths. If you're not sure where to start, Skillshare have designed learning paths to help you get from novice to pro in no time. Learning paths are hand-picked classes that are meant to be taken in order. They build on one another, reinforcing the lessons. They are available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced, and have a wide variety of categories, including design, productivity, creative freelancing tools and software such as Procreate or After Effects. I have favorited so many learning paths to get learning this year, from learning paths like Become a Pro in Procreate or Supercharge Your Productivity with Notion and even Grow Your First YouTube Channel. 
I use Skillshare to develop skills personally and in my work. One learning path I'm really looking forward to is mastering Adobe After Effects. This is something that used to daunt me in college, but After Effects will be so incredible for my videos this year and just taking my editing to that next level. So whether you're looking to develop skills in a creative profession or you're a hobbyist looking to develop your hobby even further this year, Skillshare is the place for you. And why not try a learning path for yourself today? The first 500 people to use my link below will get a full month free with Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare. Back to the comfort film. Next Next, we have Ratatouille. I love Ratatouille. Ratatouille is in my top four on Letterboxd. I absolutely adore Ratatouille. There is so much about it that I love. I just think it is one of the best films of all time, not even best animations of all time, just best films of all time. It is such a heartwarming, gorgeous film. The elements of it just kind of make it, first of all, how they romanticize Paris is breathtaking. That first scene where Remy crawls up onto the roof and he realizes he's been below Paris the whole time. Oh my God, it is insane. Spoiler about my life actually. I have never been to Paris and at this stage, it's almost like I know I will be so in love with Paris when I get there that it freaks me out. I know some people are like, it's overrated, but it's just so me. Like Paris is, is so me, it's unreal. So it almost scares me, the idea of going to Paris, but I'm going this spring, so I'm very excited. I cannot wait. I will be listening to the Ratatouille soundtrack the whole way on the plane. I will also say one of my favorite characters in film of all time is the food critic. I love the food critic. I don't know why I love him so much, Anton Ego. There's something about him when I watched this film when I was younger and still to this day. I just think he is the coolest character. I love him. His desk, his little office setup. Chef's kiss. See what I did there? Chef's kiss. We're talking about Ratatouille. The food element makes this film as well. It makes me love food even more, seeing how romantic it is cooking. It's just... It's just stunning. Next is Ford versus Ferrari, also known as Le Mans 66. This film is a classic, classic, I would say like Hollywood film. This stars Christian Bale and Matt Damon, a duo that we need to see more of. They were so good in this film together, but it's just a really beautiful film of an underdog story. It's like Rush, which is a brilliant Formula One film. It is such a good movie. I, I would call that a comfort film as well. And even Top Gun Maverick, those kind of like, it's action-y, but everybody loves it. That's the vibes Le Mans 66 or Ford versus Ferrari is. It's very comforting. It's just a beautiful, beautiful story. It's really well told. It's really well made. There's not enough films like that made anymore, I find, in Hollywood. You could watch this again and again, and it's so good. It's that kind of film where your dad, your mom, your brother, your sister, they're all going to enjoy it, and that's what I love about it. Next up is The Devil Wears Prada. A classic, an icon, a number one, a 10 out of 10. We love The Devil Wears Prada around here. I probably watch that film, I would say over six times a year, and I'm not joking. It is just one of those films I can throw on. I will never, ever, ever get bored of it. This film just hits all the points. It hits all the marks. The characters, the settings, the acting, the fashion, everything, the world it's set in, the pace of the film, it all just hits those marks. I also love that this film kind of came out very much in an era of she has to end up with somebody, romance has to be a thing. Um, and although romance is a thing in this film, I never watch it for that purpose. I really, really love Anne Hathaway's character, Andy, with Emily Blunt's character. I love their dynamic and I also adore Miranda, which is obviously the incredible, the iconic Meryl Streep. Miranda, Andy, Emily, all of them. Stanley Tucci in this film. I love seeing New York. I love seeing Paris. I just love it all. It's so comforting. I'll throw it on and I can also throw this on with anybody and they will always enjoy it. It's a great film. It's really good. But I am going to say at the end of the day, I don't think anybody's a really good person in this film. That includes Andy, especially Nate and all of them. They're all kind of a little bit, eh. but I love it anyway. Then we have Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> 
This is another rom-com and one that I really, really love. I'm going to say this is different to the rom-com like How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days because I think this film is kind of like an ensemble cast. It's a big cast, there's a lot going on and there's more going on than just our main characters. I adore the settings of this film. I adore the drama of this film. It is such a beautifully shot film. Gemma Chan's my favorite in this film. She is so gorgeous. I love her character. I want a spin-off of her character. I want a happy life for her. She is iconic. What the fuck was he doing? Not telling her that he was that wealthy and then just bringing her over to meet his family and she had to just figure it all out herself. He really threw her to the dogs. He was a bit of a dick. Give some context, give some background. I get that like, oh, I don't, I don't want her to be with me just for my money. But at this point when you're bringing her to meet your family, you gotta tell her, you gotta be honest, man. I almost kind of love the fact though as well that, I don't know the names of these characters right now. I probably should have done more research here. I apologize. I love the fact that, how many minutes have I been talking for? Let me check. I've been talking for half an hour. Anyway. I almost kind of love as well at the same time though that the boyfriend buggers off because I really like watching our lead actress. She in the end stands up for herself and learns her value and appreciates who she is and where she comes from. Always an easy watch, always comforting. It always seems to be on TV and I'll always watch it every time. But lastly, my favorite comfort film. It is not just one film, it is a group of films. It is anything directed by Nancy Myers. Nancy Myers is an incredible director and she nails, to me, comfort films. Her films are such a comfort to me, it is unbelievable. The Parent Trap, Something's Gotta Give. My number one will always be The Holiday, but unfortunately it is a Christmas film, so you can't watch it all year round. But her films are just so gorgeous. Their settings, their characters. I love how she kind of just romanticizes life. I think her films are made to be comfort films. It's Complicated is another good one. Seeing Meryl Streep owning a bakery and making croissants is... Like, how is that not... That is the most comforting thing ever. It is so wholesome. Her worlds she builds are so wholesome. Her films with a glass of wine or something like a hot chocolate are like... Stunning. I love. These are just some of the films I find massive comfort in, especially in the past month. There's lists of films I find comforting. I could name hundreds more, but these are for now what have gotten me through one of the hardest months of my life. I appreciate them so much and I always will. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna have some more videos coming very soon. So let me know what you guys would like to see film related below. Next week, I have a really exciting celebrity film club video coming out. It is a certain celebrity Celebrity who's got a big 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 movie coming out on the 1st of March if you can guess leave it in the comments but I will see you guys very very soon I love you all so much bye go watch some films tell me about them